Okay, hi guys, welcome back to uh, ESA. Um, so this week I'm going to talk about um, urban wineries. It's a phenomenon really, which is like, I would say like, clearly we can confirm that. It's like taking London pretty seriously. And I'm here with me Warwick, who is the uh, founder <laughs> of uh, Renegade. Renegade yeah. One. We are now in Bethnal Green in the wine. And I mean, basically it's pretty much where everything is happening. And we'll just have a little interview with Warwick, who's going to tell us um, everything about um, urban wineries and also the reason behind Renegade as well. Sure, sure. Okay, so we should start with you then. Yeah. So Warwick, tell us a little bit about you, if it's okay. Yeah, Get sure, started. sure, sure. So my, my background is not in the wine industry. I came from a finance background and I just decided in my early 30s to just to have a completely different change of life. And I'd seen the growth and evolution of urban wineries in the US. Yeah. And I just couldn't believe why London didn't already have urban wineries. Um, and so we started. And, and we started and we've changed a lot over the last three years. And I'll tell you about a little bit about why we've changed. But um, but yeah. So yeah, great, great start. A complete change of, of you know, life. Um, yeah, completely. I mean, I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to make something. I wanted to construct something. I wanted to build a brand and I wanted to to change the perception of, uh, of winemaking to a certain extent and bring people who live in London into the project. Nice, um, Look, good, uh, good stuff. Yeah. And so yeah, you, you actually went so that far that you call it Renegade, which is by definition uh, yeah. something which goes against institutions. Yeah, exactly. So, well, what mean, is it makes? Well, I mean, the reason we call it Renegade is because there was a song by a band called the Ex Ambassadors called right. Renegades. And I used to listen to it in the morning and I just like the word. Um, and actually the intention of the project in the beginning wasn't to be very radical or to be, to be a renegade in the wine space. Uh -huh. that, that really happened more over the two or three years of evolution. Right. Um, and the real thing was that when we started making wine, we would buy grapes from small family producers in Europe and the UK. And we would ask them, what should we do with your grapes? What sort of wine should we make with your fruit? And because they knew their grapes better than us. Yeah. So what, what we started doing was making what I call copycat wines. Wines that tasted very similar to the wines made from the region we bought the grapes from. Yeah. So if we bought Sauvignon Blanc from Bordeaux, we would make a Sauvignon Blanc that tasted like a Bordeaux Sauvignon. And we soon realized that it was a complete waste of time. There's no point trying to copy styles of wine. And so the, the thing that happened was that we changed and we decided to forget about the rules of winemaking, forget about Appellation and uh, DOCG rules in Italy, yeah. and say, if we can buy really high quality grapes from Bordeaux or Burgundy or Piemonte or Puglia, what would you do now with that fruit, given that everything you know about winemaking and everything you know about technology? And so it's a little bit like what the craft beer movement has done in beer. So if you think 10, 15 years ago, before Brewdog and a lot of the urban craft breweries, uh -huh. people were making lager or pilsner, or the old men were drinking ales in pubs. Yeah. And now everyone's drinking craft ale, you know, because they, they decide to use German malt, American hops, new technology, and try and create a drink for a modern generation. And I think what we're trying to do in the wine space is trying to take high quality fruit and make modern wine for a modern palate and a modern generation without the constraints of, uh, of rules. That's very good. I mean, like, this is clearly a contemporary way of life, of living, creating a new product. Yeah. And, um, and that's, I mean, I can tell now because we've been talking about that, you are listed in many restaurants uh, yeah. around London and, yeah. and the UK even, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, including Mission Star, which is a big achievement, I would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think one thing that's been surprising is how how welcoming the uh, sommeliers at Mission Star restaurants have been. So, for example, we sell to a restaurant group um, called Caprice Holdings. They own a number of restaurants. Exactly. Yeah. Their, their head wine buyer uh, was a guy called Guillaume. He was Alain Ducasse as head sommelier in Paris. Mm -hmm. And he brought our wines on in London, you know. And he was the last person I would think would buy, like, <laughs> yeah. a new independent alternative style wine. Yeah, where you might sound a bit traditional yeah, like, yeah. Uh, in approach. Exactly. And he's put some of our wines on in some of the most traditional restaurants in London because he just thinks that the world is ready for, an, for, for evolution, you know, and, mm -hmm. and innovation in wine. 
So. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome commonly on trade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so tell me a bit more about, like, very briefly, yeah. how would you describe to people who really don't understand how, how on earth you can make wine in London? Yeah. Uh, the process, like, very quickly, how you sure. can get them from away from here and make your wine. Perfect. So the most important thing is the quality of the fruit. So we buy from small family <coughs> vineyards in mm -hmm. France, Italy, Germany, Spain, England. We hand harvest the fruit, so to keep it in perfect condition, and then we put it in small baskets and transport it to London in refrigerated trucks. Brilliant. Yeah. And the journey, the journey <coughs> from the Falz in Germany is eight hours. The journey from Bordeaux is 17 hours. And you think that the, the quality of the fruit is exactly the same when it arrives here than when it was picked. Right. And in fact, sometimes it's better. And the reason it's better is because it's very good to press grapes cold. And the grapes, when we get them, are always cold. They're right. clean, they're cold, and the, and the uh, atmosphere inside the truck means that the, the, uh, the moisture of the grapes is dry, so the concentrated flavor is better. Right, so okay. the condition of the grapes is equal, if not better, to any vineyard uh, scenario. Great stuff. And so yeah. you, are, you are making your wine just here in the room next to us, that yeah, I just yeah. showed. Every single thing is done here in London. So pressing, fermentation, aging, bottling, filtration, Everything is done here, everything. Yeah. There's only one thing we don't do in London at the moment, and that's the discorching of the traditional methods. Okay. Because we do not have a riddling racks and we do not have a glycol neck freezer. Right. So it's done about 30 minutes south of here. Okay, yeah. great. And so how do you see the future for the style of wine you're making, or urban wineries as a, as a, yeah. as a style actually? Or as a you know what, the, the honest answer is, Urban wineries are a tough thing to, 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 to develop because the financials of winemaking are very different to the financials of brewing or distilling. Uh -huh. And I think that um, it makes life a lot more difficult because yeah. the time from grape harvest to production is longer and the expenditure, the capital expenditure to invest in a winery is higher. But I think that you know when we started there was next to no urban wineries in London okay. and now there are four. You know, yes. and if you look in New York, there's eight, and in Portland, there's twelve. And in, you know, I think the future is great. Yeah, and you told me Paris as well. Paris has two: Le Vigneron <laughs> Parisien and Le Winery Parisien. Amazing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Very different styles too. Very different styles of winemaking. Okay. One biodynamic and one uh, more traditional. Okay. Yeah. Last question for you. Yeah. How do you see the future for Renegade then? Uh, well, I hope it works because if it doesn't work, I'm going to be on the street in my 40s because everything I ever earn is invested in this business. So right. I, I want it to work. Um, but I think the, the future of Renegade is, is evolution of, of, of styles. So I think wine in can, um, uh, secondary fermentation in can, right. um, country blends. Um, I think it's about, yeah. Uh, uh, innovation. 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 Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, last one then. Got question. Um, you, uh, talking innovation, I just tried some of your wines and I was yeah. blown away, really. Yeah. And so there are some wines which are really different. Yeah. Uh, example, you you've made me taste a sparkling wine uh, where you use hop uh, yeah. to make beers with. Yeah. I mean, yeah. usually made to use make beer. Yeah, yeah. Is this, can you tell me more a little bit about this specific wine? Yeah. And, and actually, I'm on a question for you, a bit tricky. Sure. Can we call it a wine or a beer at the end? So, okay, so this is an English sparkling wine. The grapes are from Herefordshire, near Wales. Okay. The grape is Seval Blanc. It was fermented naturally in stainless steel yeah. to become a base wine. And then we aromatized it. We added beer hops, citra and mosaic. Right. And then we added a little bit of sugar and yeast and bottle fermented it to go for sparkling in the bottle. Great. Legally, it's called an aromatized wine-based drink. Okay. It's, it's, it moves, even though it's 100% grapes, it moves from being a wine to being a, a drink. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, this is kind of like, it was an experiment because Seval Blanc as a grape can be very boring. And we left it on the lees for a year. It didn't get very interesting. Okay. The only way to make it good would have been to do traditional method or method champenoise yeah. and leave it on the lees for three, four years. We don't have that time. We have to make and sell wine. Of course. So, yeah. yeah, so we decided to copy an idea from the US. In the US, there's an urban winery called the Infinite Monkey Theorem in Denver, Colorado. Okay. And they do a, a carbonated, hopped Californian Sauvignon Blanc. Right. And so I just copied a little bit of their idea and a little and invented a little bit on ours. Great, great, and brilliant. Thank yeah. you very much. Pleasure. Thanks, Warwick. Um, so I will see you next week uh, on the sum again. 
I'm, I'm also doing this video for Les Vins de Manu for the French. I will do some subtitles for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked it, share with friends. And of course, if you pass around London, just come and visit uh, Renegade Wines. We are in Bethnal Green next to the station. You could hear the train actually. And, um, and so yeah, so see you next week and Santé people.